Hello, it's Paul here. I'm here to give you some information on how to analyze and present data using Microsoft Excel. And for my students, this is important for the SM4 assignment. So I've been given some data here, which is from an IT help desk. Here I have the titles of what this data uh, shows us. And if I scroll down, I will see this is a pretty large spreadsheet and I actually have uh, 28,147 different uh, IT help desk logs. Uh, it's 147 because of course the top line here isn't actually a request. This these are the uh, numbers, the uh, sort of ID numbers of the people in the company making the request. They have a seniority. The IT owner is the person who is actually uh, looking at the issue. This is the issue type. This is the type of request, the severity of the problem, the priority that the help desk is going to give to the problem, the number of days the problem has been open, i.e. since it was uh, recorded and then the satisfaction of the customer. So the first thing I want to do is I want to count up the number of uh, issues here in column E. And what I'm going to do then is that I'm going to apply a filter because I'd like to put them into alphabetical order. So to apply a filter, you go to Home, you go to Sort and Filter, and apply the filter here. And you will see that every one of these columns now has a filter attached. Filters are really useful. They look down the whole list of data and pick out the different things that are there. So if I looked at this one, there's be a huge list of numbers. Many of them are all different. If I look at this one here, this is much better. It tells me that there are four levels of seniority. And if I wanted to, I could turn some off and just show the junior ones. You see, that's what a filter does. And then I'm showing far fewer records than I would have been previously. Still a lot of them. Notice here, the row numbers have gone blue because I have a filter applied. Let's turn the filter off, clear filter there, gone back to normal. So that's how you use filters. If I look on the filter here, I see that there are actually one, two, three, four different types of category of IT issue. And I actually want to find out in that, whatever it was, 27,000 numbers, I want to find out how many of these there are, how many people had access login issues, how many hardware issues were recorded, software, systems, etc. And that's what I'm going to do. And what we use in Excel to do that is a command called count if. So let's do that. First of all, let's make sure that these are in alphabetical order. So I go to sort A to Z. That's just really because you uh, will need to demonstrate that in the assignment. And then I want to do some adding up of this column here. I will just go over to a, a blank area here that doesn't have any columns to do my counting. OK, I'm also going to put a title on here because it will be useful soon. And I'll put here issue type and make it bold. Oops. Make it bold. And over here, I will put number of issues. I'll make that bold as well, just control B. Right, so, so what we need to do then is we need to go equals count if. And what we're going to do is it asks me for count if, it asks you for the range, okay, and then what you're looking for. Now the range is huge and so what I need to do is I need to put in the first row and the last row. 
and count all the way through them. So it's going to look through the whole thing. Now I can I I know that here we're looking in column E. So I want to start counting from E2 because do you remember that E1 has a title? So E2 is the first entry and the last entry is down here. It is E28148. So that is my range set and I've got this lovely blue square line here and if I scrolled all the way up you'd see it goes all the way up to E2 there. Now you type a comma and the prompt here is saying that we want the criteria. In plain English that means what are we looking for? And I want to do a count if for uh, all of the access slash login. So I'm going to write here in quote marks because it's actually text access slash login. I press enter and I have a number there 7907. And uh, I'd say it was a deliberate mistake, but it isn't. And I've put it in the wrong column there. Here I type access slash login just to show what the issue is and there's the number of issues there let's just change that column it's a bit wide so just double click there now to make this quick and easy i'm going to do something that you probably haven't done in uh, your spreadsheets for a while i'm going to put dollar signs all over the place in front of the row and the column numbers that means that that range that i just uh, set is going to stay the same if I copy this formula down because if I didn't do that when I copy down this formula here and look for uh, the other data type the whole range that I set would actually be moving down all the way down 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 to the cell below because I'm typing this in a cell below this one okay by putting the dollar sign in here I fix the range that I want to look for through with the count if to what it is here in this row. OK, now, having done that, I just need to change this to whatever the other data type is. So I scroll up. I need to go over here a bit. And there's one called hardware there, access login. And the next one is hardware. So all the way back down to the bottom. Right there, hardware. And in here, more importantly, the criteria hardware. If I wanted to be really swish and smart with Excel, I could, of course, do this. And you're welcome to do that in your spreadsheet. I would just put in that cell there where I've written hardware. I get the same uh, outcome. OK, so it's probably slightly easier if you do it that way. Uh, now, if I go up again, what else was I looking for on here? I've got hardware, and this is why I did them in alphabetical order, so I can just check through my filtering what the next one is. It's software, and then the final one is systems. Let me do two in one now, two for the price of one here, folks. Okay, so if I write software here, and systems here, I can just, because I'm reading the cell value there, there, and there, by having this here, and no dollar signs, because I don't want those for this, because I'm moving it down a cell, I can just go copy, drag down, copy, copy. There you go. Sorted. Okay. This thing here, you could just put some nice borders around it if you want, and that needs to go into a Word document. And that's sorted out how do you make a chart from that quite easy you highlight it remember these titles are important because they will make the uh, the graph or chart look more readable and i go to insert there's loads of chart options here i said a bar chart i fancy a two column bar chart there you go just select it and if you're asked to make it a bit neater, like you need to change this scale here, because look, this scale goes to 1400. But what's the nearest 
number, it's actually, uh, I said 1,400, 14,000. It's actually 12,000. So the chart would be slightly better in my view if I change the axis here so that um, I just lost this blank bit up here between 12,000 and 14,000. So um, format axis. So I right click it and I put here the maximum is 12,000. Lovely. That also goes in to your document. So having the titles means that you have number of issues up there. And the issue type appears here at the bottom of the bar chart. OK. Everything else that you would need to do for that assignment, particularly the merits, uh, I will leave you to work out. Thanks for watching.